So structural integration was developed by Dr. Ida P. Rolf, the woman shown here, a biochemist by her training. And the work involves a very wide force range from very gentle manipulation to other strokes that take an elbow to administer. So the work definitely involves the direct category that Leon Chetov was commenting, in which the practitioner is applying a gradually increasing force with the elbow or with the knuckles at a more stiff place or stiff direction in the tissue until you feel a release, a melting or a new direction happening. And that usually happens not at a perpendicular angle in our experience, also not parallel, but usually at some kind of lateral shearing angle in relationship to the tissue fibers on the knees. The client is frequently inst instructed to actively participate. Like in the seated client here, I may ask her to come and meet me from the inside with very minute, invisible, subtle micro-movements with individual vertebra, while I apply strong pressure of 100 Newton or something like that on her lumbar fascia and ask her to also to connect that with her feet. And we believe that it's not only refining her proprioception, but also helping me to get in contact with deeper fascial layers underneath. The work also includes increasingly indirect approach techniques in which we follow the tissue in the easiest direction like Leon Yu showed and wait for a release from happening there. Dr. Rolf's teaching for this work was, residing, was resting on three main premises. First is our physical form, my posture from which you will recognize me from far away at this conference, is influenced to a large degree by the uh, patterns in our fascial body. The second premise is that that fascial network uh, pattern, my individual configuration, is shaped again to a very large degree by our relationship with gravity. Uh, for example, if I have a chronically forward shifted head, it can be expected that the posterior neck fascia will take over holding tension and will stiffen more likely. So the goal of structural integration is to help the client to achieve a more economical alignment within the gravity field. And that's why we evaluate that very frequently, have the client standing up, taking photographs, have them walk, sitting, etc. And then we look at pictures like that where after a couple of sessions you want to see a difference uh, in their alignment with gravity. And the third premise is that the assumption from Eiderolf that uh, skillful application of manual pressure is sufficient in order to loosen fascial adhesions, and that's her explanation that she's giving here. But all of them are connected one to another. This is a model of two muscles designed to show how muscles work and how muscles fail to work. Anyway, like whenever a myofascial structure is injured, it secretes various semi-fluid materials, and the semi-fluid material becomes a glue. It will be a glue between the, the flesh, and that glue prevents it from really working independently. And so when we call on this muscle for movement, what we really get is this muscle impeded by that muscle. And so there is not free movement. Now, as the Rolfa applies energy at this point, perhaps, and this point, into something of a hard little knot, as he applies energy there, the glue seems to dissolve. And all of a sudden, he feels under his fingers that one muscle is moving on the other muscle freely, and that these two muscles can begin to operate in their respective directions in the direction called for by their design.